Hey everyone, Ben here. Um, so... I wasn't going to talk about the fact that it's September 11th, but today is September 11th, 2016. 15 years after the Twin Tower attack. Um, so it feels like it would be weird to not talk about it. Like, I wasn't going to talk about it, I wasn't going to make this blog about that. Um, but I feel like it would just be weirder if I didn't acknowledge that that's today. So. Real quickly, I guess I'll just tell my where was I story, because um, people always want to know that since I'm a New Yorker. Um, this September or October, depending on how you look at it, will mark my 16 year anniversary. I said this September, this is September. So this is the 16 year anniversary, basically, of how long I lived in New York. Um, I officially moved to New York in September, like I officially, well not officially, I signed the lease on an apartment in September, but then I went back home to Wisconsin for one last month. Um, for whatever reason, that made sense. Like, yeah, I've moved here. Now I'm just gonna go back to Wisconsin and, you know, work at the restaurant and hang out with my friends and act like I didn't move to New York. And then I'll come back to New York after a month has gone by. Like, I've already paid rent, I got my keys. It was fun to go back to work, waiting tables in Wisconsin. Like, these are the keys to my New York City apartment. And, um, You thought I was going to burp, didn't you? Put it in the comments if you thought a burp was coming after that. Uh, well, hey, there you go. Um, she's drinking a 20 ounce today. So, I moved to New York officially, like uh, October 5th, I think, of 20, uh, 2001. So, um, no, 2000. Wow, 2000. So, when September 11th happened, I had lived here maybe 11 months and um, I didn't really have a real connection to the Twin Towers. I didn't really know anyone that worked there. I didn't really know anyone that worked downtown. Like, it's not, if I had, if, if it had happened like now, when I'd lived here for so long, that would have been a lot harder for me. Like I would have had a lot more of a connection to it. So for me, it was almost like something I was watching on TV, you know, like it was, in a sense, I mean, that, that is to say, like, I also lived in New York City when it happened, so you could feel it. You could feel it. It was like, I don't mean I physically felt it, but basically that morning, now I had just moved to a new apartment. I had just moved into my own apartment out of, out of the place with my roommates, who were horrible. Um, I had my own apartment, and I just bought this really big TV from this really hot guy. I kind of only bought the TV because he was so hot and I was like, I'll buy your TV. Touch me, like me. Um, and I hadn't yet situated my apartment the way I wanted it. So temporarily my futon was like immediately up against my TV, like TV screen touched the bed. Um, and I, I got a phone call around like nine ish in the morning. I don't remember what time, maybe like 9, maybe 9.15, maybe 9.30. It felt like 9.30, but it was, it was before the second plane hit. I think it was before the second plane hit. And I got a call from my mom, who was like panicking. And she's like, a plane just hit the World Trade Center. And in my mind, what I pictured was like, a small crop duster, you know, a small plane was like taking a tour around Manhattan and was like flying a little too close and like a wing accidentally hit the building, you know. I didn't imagine that like plane crashed into the building. I, I, I just, I never imagined that that's what she meant. Um, and she was like, turn on the TV. And I'm like, what channel? And she's like, any, any channel. So here I like, turn on the TV, which is this like 32 inch TV that's like right in front of my face. And like, boom, the image is like right in front of me. And I had just moved into the building, so I'd never been up to the roof yet, but my first instinct was like, go up on the roof and look. Um, we're from Wisconsin, so we say roof. Um, so I go up to the rooftop. My first fear, my first thought is like, I shouldn't be up here. Um, you know, they're gonna say something. I, I'm not supposed to be on the roof. Like anyone's caring about that today. And I get up there, and I remember, like, I open the door, I'm out on the roof, I've not been up here, so I don't know, like, where to look. So I, like, look here, 
I kind of do a full turn and then I look and boom, like there it is, way off in the distance. Um, if you look up like 30th Avenue Astoria on Google Maps, you can see how far away that is. It's pretty far. I would guesstimate it's like seven miles from there. Maybe three, maybe seven. I don't know. I can't really guesstimate miles, but. Um, and it just, maybe both planes had hit at that point. What it looked like, it looked like there was like two cigarettes on the skyline. Like two cigarettes just standing upright with just smoke coming off the top. And like a little charred end of the top. And, you know, you saw on the news like the big clouds of smoke like going over, you know, towards Brooklyn. But like you can't even comprehend what that looked like in person. Like... In person, the sky wraps around your head, right? Like, you can see the whole sky. There's no end to it. Imagine just, like, these two buildings generating all these white clouds of smoke that go for miles all the way over that way. It's almost like looking up at a cloud in the sky, but that cloud is coming out of a building. And... Um, I went back down... That, it was just the first tower had hit. Because then I went downstairs, turned on the news, and I heard that a second tower had hit. Um, or I heard that, this, that the first tower fell. I forget. Um, either, when I went downstairs, there was the big announcement. And either the big announcement was there's two towers, or the big announcement was a second plane is hit. But I think the announcement was that the first tower started to fall. Because I come back up, and like, it had fallen. Or maybe the second. I don't know. I don't remember. You'd think I'd remember it perfectly. And um, and there's two guys on the building. And I remember one of them in his like really thick, you know, New York accent was like, you know, we got our guys in there. Like they were kind of like HVAC workers. And uh, he was talking about like they have people in that building. They have people working in that building. And um, and yet, it looked weird to me. Like, it looked like when one of the towers fell, I could kind of recognize, like, the building with the long spire on the top. I could kind of recognize that. Like, it looked like the building fell, but it fell incompletely. So, like, it looked like the top of the building was, like, sitting here, resting on the other one, waiting for the collapse to finish so that it could fall and hit the ground. That can't be what happened, but that's, like, what my eyes were showing me. Um... And, you know, I didn't, like, my emotions are so compartmentalized, like, it didn't register anywhere. Like, I wasn't sitting there thinking, like, oh, shoot, oh, freak. I mean, there's no need for me to swear right now. So, there wasn't any part of me thinking, like, oh, my God, oh, shoot, oh. I, I was just kind of, like, dumbfounded, like, oh, wow. Huh. Well, that's weird. And, like, I'm older and more cynical now, but, like, I was 21 and just moved here with this big open heart. And I just remember, like, thinking, like, I really hope no one was hurt. I really hope no one was hurt. It's interesting for me to think that my heart was able to hold the space for that possibility. That I wasn't so cynical that I still believed, like, maybe, maybe people saw it coming from far enough away that everyone just cooperated and started filing out. Maybe the communication was so, I, I didn't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't inside the buildings. I don't know what was happening. But in somehow I just thought, like, maybe it's not too dumb to hope that everyone got out okay course isn't the isn't the the truth there's this part of me that also thought you know I I do believe in reincarnation like I think it's 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 kind of foolish to think that a whole soul would just like come through here once you know what I mean 
Like it seems like a soul lives longer than a body. So souls just keep coming back and back and back until they're done and then they move on. And so in my mind, I remember in the few days after September 11th, I remember thinking, so 3,000 people were killed in that, in that incident. Maybe more because, you know, people who were ill or who died years after. And in my mind, I just thought, clearly three or 4,000 people have been born by now in the world since then. So all those souls are back. You know, they left, those bodies left, but all those souls are back and they're living new lives. So I like to think that those 3,000 people are all like 15 year olds today, you know? Like they're all 15 year olds living their life in this new world with no memory of what happened. That's just kind of what makes sense to me. Well, I guess technically they'd be 14 year olds today because they're not quite 15 yet because it's only been 15 years so yeah that's just kind of what makes sense to me you know there's a bunch of like 14 year old souls who are here after that happened that's just what makes sense to me you know um so anyway that's that's my story um you know i was working at a restaurant down on 18th and park avenue and um you know, below 14th Street, everything was chaos. Like, you really couldn't go below 14th Street um, unless you lived down there. Um, and so I, I didn't really end up going down there. I mean, you could smell it. When I left work, I remember I saw all these people walking around. I mean, 18th Street is a long way away from um, the World Trade Center. But you'd see people outside like covering their faces with masks or napkins or cloths or rags or shirts. I remember thinking like, okay, everyone calm down. Like you don't have to act like the world's ending or anything. This was in like the days after, maybe even a week or so after. And I remember I left work that, that afternoon and I go outside. The minute I went outside, I had to come right back in. I only had to walk like a couple of blocks to the train the second I got outside, I had to come right back in and ask my manager, can I please take a cloth um, napkin? Because I have to cover my face to go outside. Like, there's no way I can go outside and breathe for more than a couple seconds. It was just, it just felt like, you know, like burning metal going in your lungs. Um, I don't really have much of a story. That's, that's really it. You know, my story was more about people who lived in Wisconsin calling and finding out if I was okay um, people really being terrified for months I remember you know like a month or two or three after there was like some plane crashed in far Rockaway which is so far away from where I am but my mom heard that on the news and called me and was like hey there's a plane crash are you okay blah 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 I'm like yeah that's so far away from me and then she just broke down crying and she just started saying I just want you to come home and that was, and, and at that moment I was like, I'm at work at a restaurant out on the floor with my phone. I can't be on the phone. I have to hang up. I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. I love you. I'm so sorry. I have to hang up. And it's just like, you can't convince someone back home that like, I'm fine. I'm okay. And I felt bad just hanging up. But I'm like, I gotta go. Um, so anyway, not much of a story, but there you have it. Um, and I mean, it, it, when I first moved here, I needed to know where the towers were because if I was going downtown and I would get off the train, I would always kind of like go in between the blocks and look because from wherever you go, you could see them, the towers. So that was how I could get my bearings because I needed to know which way was downtown. And it's nice now that the towers back up, you know, it's like one big tower and um, you can see it from just about everywhere. I mean, like once you get past a certain, you know, I don't, from Midtown, you can pretty much see the tower just about anywhere you go. I mean, not anywhere. I mean, you have to be at an avenue to see it, but it, it's, it's nice. It's comforting to be able to see it again. Um, I guess one last story I'll tell is that, uh, in my first year, probably June or July, I was, cause I was doing a show and there was a guy who I was, I kind of dated um, who was in the show with me, maybe May, maybe June. 
yeah, maybe like April or May, because we were still in rehearsals. And um, we went on a date, and we were like kind of like hang out, hanging out around Lower Manhattan, because he lived in like Jersey City, I think, and so it was easy for us to meet in Lower Manhattan and hang out. Um, and he noticed that wherever I went, I kept like looking at the towers because I was just in awe of the towers. You know, because like just moving here and being down around them and so close to them, they're so huge. And so there was a certain point where he's like, okay, well, let's cut through. Let's like, let's take this little shortcut. And he takes me through this like botanical garden area, which is really beautiful. We come, we're getting ready to leave the botanical garden area. And he's like, all right, close your eyes. And takes me by the hand and starts walking. And I'm taking really small little timid steps because my eyes are closed. He's like, no, big steps. We're, we're walking for quite a ways. Takes me by the hand and I'm just like walking totally blind for, you know, a minute or so. And we get to a point, he's like, all right, stop. He's like, all right, sit down. So I'm sitting down, my eyes are closed. I'm like, I don't know what's coming. This is weird for a first date. He's like, sit down. He's like, all right, you're on a bench, so lay down. So he has me lay down on my back. He's like, all right, look up. And I open my eyes. I'm laying down on this bench and I look up and the towers are right here. I'm in the courtyard like right down on the ground underneath the towers, laying on like a, I think like a concrete bench, looking up and like from my point of view, it's like I see tower and tower going up into the sky. At nighttime, lit up. And I think that's the last time I saw the towers. It's probably the last time I was down around there. It was just striking. It was so striking. Um, so that's it. I don't want to make this video too long. I, I know I always say that I have someone calling me in a moment. And I have a big bag of Chipotle over there. Um, so I'm going to go eat. Really quickly, I'll just say this is now the end of my busy weekend. Uh, I had all this work to do. I still have some work to do. I have to collaborate on a drag mix tonight for a friend. Um, but this afternoon out in Long Island, I led an effective introduction to the Landmark Forum. So... Um, this guy, Dean, he uh, he hosted an introduction to Landmark Forum in his home out in Long Island. And originally we were planning on having four guests, but then like one guest could you know, didn't confirm, two guests had to back out last minute. He's like, I don't know, we may as well cancel, it's just one guest, so I don't want to bother. And I was like, absolutely not. You know, like I am totally committed to and I mean, it's like a long trip, you know? Like, I have to, like, get to Penn Station, then it's like an hour train ride, then they pick me up at the train station. You know, like, we're talking, like, you know, two hours from door to door. And a lot of work, a lot of preparation work that goes into leading it. And I led the introduction, and it was effective. Um, the, the guest who I was leading to, she registered for the Landmark Forum. She's doing it on December 4th? December 2nd? 2nd. December 2nd. Um, and she's so excited. She's so excited. I'm so excited for her. Um, so it was really worth it. It was just awesome because like today was one of those days where like yesterday was a tough day for me. And when he called me to be like, let's just call the whole thing off. All I wanted to say was like, yeah, fine. It's okay. You know, like I, I'd rather, then I have the day off anyway. Like I so wanted to just be like, yay, now I can stay up late, do whatever I want to do, sleep until forever o'clock. But like, that's just not who I am. You know, I was just like, absolutely not. Like we're, we're doing this, you know? So, um, I, I'm so glad that I didn't take the easy way out. I'm so glad that like I stood for someone else. Um, anyway, so that was that. And now, any minute now, um, one of my fellow co-chairs from the meeting that I was talking about, that I chair for, you know, people in recovery, she's calling me in about two minutes, so I gotta end this video. Um, really just to, like, support me and being like, okay, what can we create together to, like, help out the group and, like, serve the group and make sure that the group has what they need and that everything's taken care of. So it'll be fun to have her support and just kind of create together, you know, like, you know, make a possibility together. Um, so anyway, I'm going to keep it to that. That's, that's all for now. I'm not going to race the clock if I go over 20 minutes by a few seconds. Anyway, um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say. I can end this. Boom. Under 20 minutes. Yes. I love you guys. Bye.